What is this? It's a black background! It's a red background! And Spider-Man is on it! That's enough for the cover! No, he's not! He looks bad! They make me cry in the shower! I don't like looking at these! They make me want to die! You don't want to be like this. What's up, guys? Yes. I'm back. And welcome back to the channel, you know? And if you're new here, subscribe. If you don't subscribe, <laughs> don't... <laughs> don't look under your covers. You might see something white instead. So... I know you guys have been wanting me to talk about Spider-Man video games for a bit, so, uh, you know, I think we finally can start making videos about this stuff, you know? Uh, so we're gonna be talking about video game covers. So let's get right into it, because some of these are really damn good, and some of these are complete dog dookie buttholes. What the fuck is this piece of shit? So, first off, let's talk about the Neversoft Spider-Man games. Now, I don't own these games, but I have seen them, obviously. I have not seen the back cover art, though, so this is going to be, like, the only game we're not going to be talking about that with it, when it comes to the back art. Or, how uh, some people like to refer it, Backshot. First game, very simple. It's just Spider-Man crawling up a building. I mean, it makes sense, you know, for the time. It's basically like, you're playing Spider-Man. This ain't no Batman. This ain't no Superman. You're playing Spider-Man. I think it works pretty well. I mean, the game is literally just called Spider-Man, so it's it works pretty well. I mean, you could have had some of the villains in the background. I get that. But because this was, like, the first one, you were able to get away with it. But the second game, I don't think I can really let that slide. It's fine. It's a lot like the first game, it's just Spider-Man shooting a web, but it says really nothing about what the game is going to be about, and it's a little weird. I feel like it's just a little bit lazy. Here's the thing. If you swapped the first game's cover and the second game's cover and put them on, and put whatever title goes with which, it's going to look like they're going with the same game. Like, they look like they could go with each other's games. They're not unique. In my opinion, I feel like for the second game, it's called Enter Electro. Maybe put Electro on there. Just a thought. They're like, uh, they're, they're basic, but you know, they were the first ones, so you gotta give them that. But yeah, uh, that's the Neversoft Spider-Man game covers. Now, uh, this one right here is not bad. Simple, yet effective. For movie license games, uh, this, if you couldn't already tell, this is based off of a movie. Um, it's called Spider-Man, if you didn't know that already, you dumbass. It's a very cheap and basic cover, you know, it's just Spider-Man's eye. But I will say, the back cover art, it's buttery good. I really like it. I don't know why I said buttery good. But right here, these, I can work without. I mean, they're just basic shots. It's nothing unique, you know, let's, let's just say it at that. Right here, we got Spidey fighting the goblin. It's cool, you know? I do, however, kind of wish that Green Goblin was inside of Spidey's eye. We do also have a bio for what the game is about, so if you wanted to read that, go ahead. I don't care, I'm not your mom. The design is not great, but this right here does look pretty cool. But yeah, that's about it for the Spider-Man 1 cover. Ah! Let's talk about Spider-Man 2. In my opinion, it's just a little bit better. I mean, it's a movie merchandise cover, but I do give this points for uh, giving me more of the Spider-Man body. You know, I, I love touching Spider-Man. I mean, I am Spider-Man, so I mean, touching my, I mean, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Shut up. Uh, I will give this game points because they did uh, the villain inside of Spidey's eye. They have Doc Ock. Peter Parker. Brilliant, but lazy. Shut the fuck up and look at what's- I think that just edges it out a little bit compared to the first cover art. We'll say the back is a lot more lazy. Literally just quotes of like, Dazzling sense of aerial freedom. Endlessly entertaining. Fluent and stunning. A must have. I don't care. And then we just have regular shots of the, the game. It, with an empty back. It's, it's kind of boring. I'm not gonna lie. But- it doesn't suck. It is a little bit better than the original uh, movie license game, so I will give it that. But yeah, that is the Spider-Man 2 movie cover. I must contain myself for this one! Shit. I must contain myself! The voices! The voices! Okay, let's talk about Ultimate Spider-Man. Now, uh... Shit. I just 
guy. Yeah! Basically, the Ultimate Spider-Man cover art is very good. It is splendid. It is fantastic. It is perfect. It is gut-wrenching. It makes me want to no I'd say the Ultimate Spider-Man cover art is, in fact, one of the best. Spider-Man on the forefront. Perfect. We have Venom right behind him, showcasing the fact of how Trevorol... What did I just fucking say? Integral Venom is to the plot, and the fact that you get to play as Venom in this game. Yeah, it looks really good, and it's a great way of showcasing comic book art style. <sighs> oh, fuck! We have Spider-Man, and then we have Venom. And the fact we just have all this comic book shit going on. They did something super cool where we have the gameplay shots, but they put them in comic panels. And I think that is just amazing. And then you have your, you know, your basic bios. Genuinely, this looks gorgeous. But yeah, enough glazing on this. And now Spider-Man 3's cover art, I'd say is the best out of the three because they actually did something different. They they didn't just give us Spider-Man's face. <laughs> we, we got his chest instead. I mean, love the bulging chest. We got the red suit getting a bit more consumed by the, uh, the black suit, which I think is a nice way of showing the fact that you're also gonna be able to play as a black suit in the game. For some reason, I'd say this is more of a nitpick because of my hyperactive nerdy ass. They just, they just use the black suit logo. They put it on the red suit. I get the black suit is consuming it a bit, but like, it's not fully consumed. At least they should still have this side be the classic logo. It's a little weird. The darkness around the edge definitely simulates the darkness of this game, um, unless you've actually played it. Giant lizard! But yeah, the back cover is boring as hell. It's literally just a black background with just shots of the game. It's very boring. It's like the, the bios are just here. It feels very empty. And I'd say it probably is the worst out of the back cover arts for the uh, games, but this is the best one. But uh, yeah. Now we're talking about another game that I do not actually have, which is Spider-Man Friend or Foe, because I refuse to get that game, because it looks like a childish kid's game. And I'm not a kid! I'm not a little boy! I don't wear no diapers! I'm a big boy, bro! I'm a man! I wear Pluto! Friend or Foe's cover is actually very good. One of the better cover arts. It's very appealing to one's eye, and it's pretty colorful too, and it showcases a bit of what the art style is. The back, it's a basic format, still very colorful, and it highlights the villains in the background as well as on the front. It's a lot more of a basic co cover, so I didn't really need to talk about it, but I will just say it is pretty good overall. <laughs> oh, 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 shit! Uh, uh, Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Now this cover is really good. It's actually very, very good. Another one of the better ones. And it showcases Spider-Man on the front, obviously. We have Wolverine on the left forearm and a brighter, more regular New York City on his left forearm, showcasing the, you know, we have the buddy mechanic in the game and uh, just how the city starts, you know? Venom and the dark, more symbiotic, consumed New York City on the right forearm. Great at showcasing the darker side of the game, you know, we have the light and dark side, and just the symbiote and how integral that is to the actual game itself and the gameplay. There is a white background though. Now some people might be like, oh my god, it's a white background! I think the white background suits this a little more. It's a little more simple because we have all this going on right here. The back? really like it. It is a little more of a basic format but like at the top, but they did it in a unique way where it's right there, right there, and right there, and they had it shown in like webs. And then we have Black Suit Spider-Man. I think that's pretty good, you know? I think we having the red suit on here and the black suit on the back kind of works, especially because Venom is already over here, so you could probably already assume that in your head. And yeah, pretty good. Now, the uh, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions cover. Very good. The positioning is, in my opinion, like, great. It's simple, but unique. And I really like that, showcasing all four Spider-Men. I don't know why 2099 is in the forefront, because, I mean, the person who really caused the whole shattering of dimensions is this dumbass right here. Hey, Bubblehead, think fast. <laughs> Hey, it's okay because I still really like 2099. And then the back? Woo! 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 This back is good. This back is really, really good. That sounded so damn wrong. It's not my fault! It's the voices in my head! It's the voices! The voices! The back is very appealing. The back is very appealing. It's got each shot 
showcasing uh, each Spidey doing their unique thing. Shows what the game has to offer with each of these Spider-Men. Like how each is formatted inside of a fragment piece, basically the MacGuffin you're chasing after in the game. And we just have, you know, a simple little bio. Four parallel worlds, one unparalleled adventure. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. It's solid, obviously. The front is, like, iconic. Back is also very good, too. And overall, it's just fantastic. Say that again. Oh, got it a bad romance! Oh, ah! So, uh, this is the Spider-Man Edge of Time cover. I love this cover art. This is smack dibbly -umptious. I like the fact that we have just a futuristic outline around uh, Spider-Man right here, and uh, just the futuristic weird goofy crap that they have around the title itself. So we have Spider-Man in more of a position where he looks kind of beaten. His suit is obviously torn, and I think that's a good way of representing what this Spidey is going to be going through in the game. Like, he really goes through it in this game. We have Spider-Man 2099 inside of Peter's eye. Really good. New York City skyline in the background. Love how we have the present and then the future. Or the, the past and the future. I don't really know, man. The time travel is confusing. I don't get it! But, yeah. The, the front is... And the back? You're, you're so close. What is, what is this? This is a boring back. It's just... Th this is kind of cool, I guess. Your actions in one world impact the other? That doesn't make any sense because the game does that. You don't even have that choice. I, I, I don't... What, 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 what did you do? Why did you do this? Why is it so... What did you do? Why does it look like that? <laughs> no! So I do have the Amazing Spider-Man one. Now the cover art is very basic. It's just Spider-Man shooting his web, doing his thing. He he's spraying his liquids on screen. <laughs> Just the New York skyline in the background. It's it's very bland. It's very basic. Like I feel like with what goes on in this game, I feel like you could have done a little bit more. Maybe add a little bit of the lizard in there, or just uh, Alistair Smythe's robots or something. The back, it's 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 like Edge of Time, and you guys just saw how I felt about the Edge of Time one. It's it's just very bland and boring. So yeah, Amazing Spider-Man 2's cover art. It's all right. It's not bad. It's not good either. It's not poopy butt cheeks. I mean, they have the model of Spider-Man this time and they have him dangling with his skinny ass neck. And uh, it looks, like I said, it looks all right. And we have like a cool little webbing thing. I, I guess the amazing movies and just the amazing games also just really liked having the spider literally everywhere. So we have a little bit of lighting behind him. I think that's a little nice. Uh, the city is it, just, just the base of New York City in the background. Like the back, that looks pretty good. It's, it's, it's not great. But it's better. It's not Shattered Dimensions level good, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. It's like, I mean, we have shots of like Electro, Peter saving people. It's just, we have just gameplay shots and then we have a cool little shot of Spidey in the middle, which I do appreciate. But uh, yeah, gen genuinely, this cover art's okay. It's, it's, it's not great, it's not bad, it's not poopy butt cheeks, but uh, we could do better. Now, the last few games, you guys are probably waiting for since the intro. I mean, these these covers are these covers are bland. They're so basic. These are like the most basic things I've ever seen. It's Spider-Man on a background. So let's talk about the first game real quick. So the first game, in my opinion, is the worst Spider-Man cover art. I'm sorry if you're trying to simulate this is the definitive Spider-Man game because it kind of is. But really, just a just a red background? That's that's all you could do? A red background and a basic Spider-Man pose in the middle? I, I I think that's a little lazy, you know? If you really want to do something, you could just, like, Alex Ross art. I feel like that art would have been perfect in encapsulating what the game is about. Because if you're, if it's a definitive Spider-Man game, I'm fine if it has the city. 
Because this ain't no definitive Spider-Man game, all I can tell you that for sure. That's why the Alex Ross art I felt could would have worked so much better than the actual art we got. Now, Miles Morales, I'd say, is definitely a little better. Still faulting at the same issues. I mean, like I already said with the background, it basically looks like if you tried getting Daredevil to play this game. It's, it's pretty boring. It just showcases Miles' abilities and everything. And Miles one does have a really neat box art uh, that you can change, which is awesome. The back we do not need to talk about. What is that? It looks so poopy. It looks so bad. It's it's just not very good. The second game, Spider-Man 2, I'd say is a bit better. It comes to their main covers. I know, like I just talked about with the Miles one. But this right here is still very boring. It seems like Insomniac is learning just a little bit, just showcasing Peter and Miles' new abilities. Spain me too. But honestly, if I squinted my eyes and looked at this game and the first game next to each other, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference because it's just a red background. It's the same red background. Felt like you could have done something a little more interesting, like maybe given it a blue background instead. I know that's really not going to help, but I'd say it would have been a little bit better if they did that. The back art, we do not talk about. What is that? That is like the, the most basic stuff I've ever seen in my entire life. What you could have done to make this cover art better is include a bit more of the symbiote. Maybe Peter getting consumed by it, like the Hot Toys figure. Or something like that, and then you might have a bit of references and hints towards Craven the Hunter, and maybe the lizard in it, with Miles by Peter's side. I feel like that would have gone way better, but they decided not to, because they thought this would have looked better. But yeah, that's all the Spider-Man covers. Just for funsies, we're gonna rank all the covers, because... I'm your favorite YouTuber. Yeah, let's start ranking. So 15th place, we got Spider-Man PS4. Basic ass cover, worst cover I've ever seen in my entire life. Number 14, Spider-Man 2, the best out of the main covers, but 13th place with Miles Morales edges it out because it has that switchable feature. 12th place is the Spider-Man 1 movie, basic cover, but hey, it looks better than the Insomniac games. Number 11, Spider-Man 2. Definitely a little better, especially with Doc Ock and his eye. Pause. And Spider-Man 3 is the best out of the game by showing Spidey's chest and being consumed by the darkness and the black suit. I think that's a little bit better. Number 9, Tasm 1. Very forgettable. It's just Spidey with a backdrop in New York City, but I don't think it hits as hard as a couple others. Enter Electro. It's basically the exact same, but I do think it's a little bit better. It was one of the first ones, so I, I give it the pass. Number 7, the Spider-Man original Neversoft game. It's just a basic Spider-Man cover, but it looks very good, and it was great for its time. Sixth place, it's gonna go to Tasm 2. It's not great, it's not the prettiest cover, but it is better than uh, a good amount of the other ones. Number five is actually Spider-Man Friend or Foe, even though I will never play that game in my entire life. It's just genuinely pretty colorful and appealing, and I think it works pretty well. Number four, Shattered Dimensions. Iconic as hell, we have all four Spideys, and uh, yeah, it's just genuinely beautiful. Number three is The Shadows. We absolutely love it. It's, it just encapsulates so much about the game on the front and the back, and I think that is what is really good about it, and I just... It's just a great cover. Uh, Edge of Time is number two. Just, it shows so much of what the game is about on just the front cover. I'm just saying, if the back cover was, like, fantastic, it could have got number one, but it was dog dookie. That is why number one goes to Ultimate Spider-Man. It shows everything the game is about. It showcases all of it and it does it in a beautiful format, beautiful art style, and everything about it in the back is great looking at showcasing just all the gameplay has to offer and just its unique uh, setup and everything. And I really, really like it. So yeah, that is my ranking of all these tasty, delicious Spider-Man covers, except the dookie ones. I'm looking at you, Insomniac! I'm looking at you, Insomniac! But yeah, that's gonna be the end of the video. Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it, and uh, if you really do like this content, you can subscribe and like the video if you want. It does help out, but you don't have to. It's been a pretty good video, and I hope you guys like it, and uh, yeah, bye!